is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with a quick video. We're going to talk about what to expect from the Memphis Grizzlies, a team with a young nucleus, a young core but also a sprinkle of veterans and guys that can play defense, guys that can play multiple positions. They have the future with Ja Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr., one of the most versatile players that has came out the NBA, I mean, out of the draft. Not only that, this is a guy that can play multiple positions too, give you a little floor spacing, give you a lot of effort and energy on the defensive end, even though he can be a little foul happy and a little bit of a mess when it comes to rotations, but he has been excellent for his age. He outperformed my expectations. I've seen him in summer league live, and I loved his game. I loved his hustle. I loved everything about him. I came away from summer league that week because I spent two weeks in Las Vegas. I came from there saying, Jaron Jackson, he's going to be pretty good, and he ended up proving that um, in the regular season, and he also ended up proving it as a three-point shooter. He was a lot better of a shooter than a lot of us thought especially for an 82-game season and the fact that he shot better than college and high school. So it was a surprise. I thought it was going to take a while for him to get that jumper ironed out, and he was able to figure it out early in his career. Hopefully he can continue to build upon that and become even more of a deadly shooter, and then you'll have a problem from a guy like him. He has the body. He has the athleticism. He has the touch. He has a go-to hook shot. And he can post up a little bit, and he can roll to the rim excellent, and he can knock down jumpers. So he's a modern-day big with a huge upside defensively, and he, all he had to do is polish his offensive game just a little bit more, and he would be a special player and a borderline all-star early. And then again, he could be working on his game all summer because they didn't make it to playoffs, and he can be making a, a breakout season this year, even make a run for the most improved player this year. And if he would do it, I wouldn't be surprised because I was surprised how well he played last year as a rookie. And, you know, this year I'm expecting big things from him as he's one of their building blocks and their foundations pieces. And John Morant, this is another guy that has a lot of hype. This is a guy that's either your high on or low on because he is a rookie and usually rookie guards struggle a lot to score and they struggle a lot to create shots. He is 20 years old. He is only 175 in weight and he hasn't been able to show a consistent jumper, especially at the NBA level. And he is a guy that uses his speed and athleticism a lot. The game is going to be a lot slower for him based off the talent that they have. But they do have some solid athletes on this team. And I think that they can run well in transition, especially with Jaron Jackson. He can He's a big that can run. Jonas is a good piece to this team, too, because he can post up a little bit and he can roll to the basket. He has a little float. And he can finish around the rim with either hand. He also is a great offensive rebounder, a guy that can crash the paint and get them some second chance opportunities and can be very special for them. Um, I did think John Jonas was a good pickup. I was rooting for him for a long time to get more minutes and get a better opportunity in Toronto. He was able to show a lot of that potential once um, he got traded to Memphis and he was able to give you 20 and 10, which is about where he ended off before he went down with an injury. I think he can replicate those numbers. He might not give you 20 and 10, but he can give you 15. He can give you 16, give you 17 and 10 rebounds. And you look at this roster, there's not that many rebounders on this roster. So there's no real reason why he can't give you um, 10 rebounds a game. And there's no reason why he can't dominate inside because Jaron Jackson like to play on the perimeter. And when you look at this roster, they don't have any dominant bigs or bigs that's going to really eat up a lot of minutes from Jonas. And I think this is an opportunity that he really wanted and he can really exceed in because they're going to need him to really do that. And then you look at the fact they got guys like Bruno Caboclo, a guy that has huge upside, hasn't been able to realize it, haven't been able to dominate the game the way a lot of people thought he would do years ago. And he's a guy that still can't shoot, still is not a great passer, still not a great defender, and a guy that 
you know, is very raw. He, he's been going to the G League and playing for other teams for a while, and he has yet to figure it out. But when you look at the Memphis Grizzly team, they're really trying to find those dynamic players up for cheap and try to develop them, and hopefully they can find an all-star caliber player. And they also did that with Josh Jackson, a guy that played in Phoenix. They gave up on him, but he's a guy that was a top 10 talent, top 5 talent in that draft. A lot of people thought he was going to be a great player. A lot of people thought he had a bright future, and he really did. And he showed some flashes from time to time in Phoenix, showing that he can hit a mid-range shot. He can get to the basket. He can potentially be a decent three-point shooter. But with Mikael Bridges coming in, being a better defender and being a better fit with Aiden and um, Devin Booker, um, Josh Jackson is on his way out. And I think this is a team that he can really showcase what he has and what he can do because they need young prospects, like I said before, and they're going to need him to get out on a break with Jaron and Ja. They're going to need him to do the backdoor cuts and do the small little glue guy things. And if he can excel in that, he can find a home in Memphis because they're looking for a forward. And that's what I was saying about Kyle Anderson. Kyle Anderson was a guy that they thought can be that glue guy that can rebound, get out and transition, run the offense, be that extra playmaker but also be a guy that can score when needed and he showed that he can do it he just wasn't able to master that role and his ceiling is a little more limited to compared to guys like Bruno and Josh Jackson because they have the athleticism Kyle has the skill they have the athleticism and the size so if they can fill out the rest of their game they have a higher upside and higher ceiling than a guy like Kyle Anderson which is important because you want your team to be as good as they can be. And defensively and offensively, Kyle Anderson only can do so much, but he can do more than Josh Jackson and Caboclo, but they still show signs that they can do it in the future, which is important because when you're trying to build a young team, you want a, a team and players with high upside. And those guys have that, but it might take them longer to get it, but it might be worth the wait when you can't really get top talent without going to the draft because most big name free agency for free agents don't really look at Memphis as a destination to where they want to go and where they want to play, um, which is unfortunate, but it is how the game works. Uh, most teams and most players don't really, most players don't really want to live in Memphis. They don't really want to pay for Memphis and they have to find other ways to get good young talent and potential all-stars by either developing them like they did with Marcus Saw and Mike Conley, or they're going to have to trade for them like they did with um, Zach Randolph. So uh, any way it goes, they have potential, they have draft picks, and I think that that can really help them build this team quicker in the future, and it can also help them trade up in drafts to get the guy that they want or the guy that they really feel can change their franchise and for the better. But at the end of the day, you look at this roster – with Solomon Hill is another guy I want to mention that can knock down threes, can make some plays. Andre Iguodala is another guy that can really help the development of guys like Bruno and guys like Josh Jackson because he is a two-way a two-way guard slash combo forward that can really handle the ball and really play great defense. And he really understands the game and he can break it down for them since he's not going to get traded. He can really be a mentor and a person that can guide them and have a you know, a better career. And I think that's very important to have a guy like that, especially when you're trying to develop the wings, uh, especially defensively and help them understand the game a lot more and take their IQ level to another level. And I feel like Andre Godala has done that in a lot of situations, and I think he can do that in Memphis. You look at Tyus Jones, a guy that can be a, a role player, but he is a guy that can run the offense. He doesn't try to do things he can't do. He doesn't try to do anything stupid. He, you just give him the ball. He brings it up. He runs the sets. He knows where to be. He knows where the shots are going to be taken. And he, he does what he does and doesn't try to do too much. You also look at a guy like DeAnthony Milton. I'm high on Milton. I thought he was a solid player for, in summer league when I seen him. But I also thought that uh, Milton can be a two-way combo guard that can play the one or the two. But he also can shoot the three ball. He also can handle the ball a little bit. He's a solid playmaker, not great. But he is a dynamic player. And I feel like that helps this team and makes them a lot better, especially because he's on a cheap contract. But he also, like I said, has the upside of being a better offensive player than what he was in Phoenix. Um, and they didn't use him the right way in Phoenix anyway. But with him having the ball in his hand, being a backup guard or even playing the off guard position with John Moran or Tyus Jones, it gives them, you know, another weapon that they can utilize. So at the end of the day, I think the Memphis Grizzlies will definitely not make the playoffs, but I think that they have two 
huge pieces for the future in Jaron Jackson and John Morant. These are two guys that have athletic peak. These are two guys that have shown the ability to shoot. These are two guys that can be great defenders if taught right and, and be very disciplined. They have huge upside. They're very, very young, and they very compatible, and they have a, a, a great fit with each other by being versatile wing, by J J Jaron Jackson being a versatile wing and him being able to play in the pick and roll, him being able to knock down threes in mid-range should be an ideal fit alongside John Morant. So them picking high with these two picks, and they both look like short things, and they also have upside defensively. You can't really argue with that. The only thing I would say is they really got to figure out what they're trying to do and how they're trying to develop guys like Bruno and Josh Jackson because they're needing players at that shooting guard and small forward position that can be there for the long term and can really be difference makers. And they don't really have that right now, but those guys do have potential to be that. But it's up to them to put in the work and it's up to them to take their craft series and it's up to them to get a lot of shots up so that way they can focus on getting their shot better, whether it's just small steps this year or it's, it's going to happen two to three years later. This team is in no rush to be great because they just started to rebuild this season and it's just about if developing your players, getting them to a higher level, getting them a good understanding and gaining chemistry with each other. If this is going to be the players you're going to move with forward uh, from here on out, that's what you have to do, and I feel like they're going in the right direction. And even if they fall terribly and they become one of the top three worst teams in the NBA, at least they get a top five pick guarantee, which can help this rebuild with Jer John Moran and Jaron Jackson go a lot smoother, and it can get them another piece that they can build upon in the future to be even better if Josh Jackson, Caboclo, and the other guys don't work. But other than that, I like this team. I like their duo. I like their potential, and even, like I said, if they do suck and it's one of the worst teams, they still get a high draft pick anyway, which can help them build another piece to that foundation in the future. So let me know what you guys think about the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, let me know what you guys think about Jaron Jackson. Let me know what you guys think about um, Yonis' contract and how he plays. Let me know what you guys think about Ja Morant. Um, Quinn Wade, that's my nice. Let me go. Like this video. Check out my older videos on my channel. I have many playlists. I break down rookies. I break down players. I break down summer league. I do cover the draft, and I got a mock draft up already. Not only that, I do podcasts, and I also talk about the game of basketball, whether it comes to summer league, free agency, trade deadline, buyouts, and also I cover top 10 discussions and stuff like that. So you like this type of video, you like the NBA, check out my older videos and my playlists. I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. I'm 